that document. I about. hope you are properly prepared. What worries me is we were told in January by the Health Secretary that we were prepared for a pandemic, and yet we turned out we weren't prepared. So forgive me if my trust in your government telling us how well prepared we are for a no deal is rather limited, given that on the pandemic that we were supposed to be so well prepared for, we now have the worst death toll in Europe and the worst economic performance in Europe. You understand why my trust in your confidence is a bit diminished? The, as I say, because every country in the world is... I want to start talking comparisons. Why does the UK have the worst death toll in Europe and one of the worst in the world. What's the answer? Respect to you, you must have worked out why we have the worst. I'm simply asking you a simple question. Why do you believe, James Cleverly, that we have the worst death toll? The, the point I'm saying... Other than in the work we've done with vaccines, in which we've been anything but an unmitigated disaster, whether it was preparing well, with completely... a person... No, I disagree. I well, disagree. Let me give we you an ex... disagree. Well, let me give you a little list and we you can tell me where I'm wrong. PPE, abject failure, correct? Testing? No. Abject failure, supposed to be world class. It was nothing of the per sort. So we've got the per capita, we've got the highest test regime, uh, we've got the highest penetration of testing. We, we've got very quickly to show the country that the cabinet is prepared to put its arms where its mouth. Totally, I am. Whether you heard anything in the studio, I didn't have any sound on that. So, uh, okay. The, well, so just, my just view, to look, what he so said. So my was, view on this was, is it was completely wrong. People's, people's it was can be respected. Wrong. He said. As I say, until I hear what he actually said, I'm going to. Mm. Look, here's my, my argument is you, my argument is you shouldn't be ordered to take you shouldn't feel compelled to take the knee. But, but if you want to take booed. it, you shouldn't be booed and jeered That's for taking the knee. Said. Particularly when those players made it clear they weren't doing it to support any political organisation. They were doing it to support the hashtag Black Lives Matter. He's the, 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 the quote is, I had a problem with. Pierce, Pierce, my, my an problem with George Eustace, George Eustace there's said, an organization George Eustace said, if people choose to express their view in a particular way, that should always be respected. In other words, when Millwall fans booed, they should be respected. Do you agree with that? I, I'm not sure that he was saying it about the fans. As I'm staggered that you would look at footballers, white and black, taking the knee as a show of solidarity in a protest against racial injustice, and you don't think that is the right way to do it. When did I say that? You inferred it with what you just said. When did I say that? Well, you inferred there are better ways when to do it. say that? You said there were better ways to do it, in your opinion. Yep. I didn't say there's the anything knee, right? wrong with it. Well, I, I didn't say there's anything wrong with it. The point I'm saying, though, is that there's... The minister would infer that these players shouldn't be doing what and they are doing perfectly Pierce. voluntarily. Pierce. That's what you're Pierce. inferring. Uh, I did tell the studio that I need to be on Radio 4 at uh, 30 minutes past 8. Uh, as as often the case with you, we've overrun... A bit more time to catch up, cos it's been a year since we last saw you. So, thank you for so joining us. so much to talk about. So much wonderful <laughs> stuff to talk about. Come back soon. Don't leave it another year. Thanks, Quite James Cleverly. Thanks very much indeed. Um, good to talk to you. Um, to be fair, Les Ferdinand has um, also said about taking the knee that the impact has been diluted um, and says taking the knee will not bring about change in the game. Uh, actions will. So, you know, there are disputes no, I get it. about I get it. I get it, but they shouldn't whether be booed. that is the they best They shouldn't way. be booed for taking the knee, and well, nor should they James be... James Cleverly is definitely... ...players taking the knee. You are showing them disrespect aren't you, in my opinion? Anyway, uh, Lorraine. Highly charged, is she? Hi. Morning. I, don't, I think he'll be back in two years. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, actually, five. Cleverly's quite a good performer <laughs> on television. You know, it's a shame they, they boycotted us for so long. Yeah, no. And he's perfectly entitled to his opinions about yes, it. But when he tries to talk about rewriting history, about the Brexit oven-ready deal, the British people, did, when they heard Boris Johnson keep saying oven-ready deal, they assumed it included trade. Yes, yes, like they were the potatoes and the parsnips. It was only going to take 20 meal. minutes and the microwave was going to go bing and it was all going to come out ready. I know, I wish you would stop doing that. Stop the... airy fairy nonsense, we can't be bothered. Right, anyway, let me, let's, let get to the, let's get to the meat and gristle <laughs> of the world, Lorraine. What have you got for us? <laughs> OK, this is a pudding. I've in Croydon, we know that. Pioneers in vaccine distribution and logistics. Who'd have thought Well, it? if what John Humphrey says doesn't persuade you... I don't know what will. If Mel what Melanie if Harris the says... If the vaccine is... in Croydon, we know that. Pioneers in vaccine distribution and logistics. Who'd have thought Well, it? if what John Humphreys says doesn't persuade you, I don't know what will. If Mel what Melanie if Harris says... If the vaccine says, is 